So I've made few twinning videos in the past already, but haven't really made a full-on twin guide or a twin tutorial, so let's do that today. And let me start off by saying that twins are used to interpolate the properties of instances. And that means if I had this part for example right here, I could twin any of these basically instances that have numeric values to them like the vector 3 position, the assembly velocity, the color and so on. And this doesn't only work with objects in the 3D space but also for something like user interface. If you wanted to have a button that moves from let's say this left corner into the right one. And every twin is going to do that smoothly. And also excuse my voice because I am recording this early in the morning but anyways. Now how to use twins. So let's say we had this part right here and it was a ball. And I'm going to name this one ball. Then I'm going to add a script into the ball. And refer to the ball by doing script.parent. And I'm going to move this script off to the side. So firstly to use twins we have to get twin service, which is a service that you get by the game get service method. And then we actually have to create the twin that we want to play on the ball. And we do that by a twin service method by doing twin create. I'm going to name this one my twin. It's equal to twin service and then create. And as you can see that create accepts the instance, so in my case it's going to be the ball, then a twin info. And the twin info is a data type that stores parameters for the twin. And we also create it by either doing a local variable or just typing the twin info right here. But I'm going to do twin info is equal to, and then we have to use the new constructor on the twin info, which is equal to the twin info. And as you can see, it's a global, which is already in the scripts environment. So we just do twin info that's new. And then you have these different properties, like the time, easing style, the easing direction, and the repeat count. And so the time can be as simple as 3 seconds. And then the easing style and the easing direction are both enums. So you have to refer to them by doing enum, that, and then the name of the property which is easing style, and then you have all of these different easing styles right here. And to show you how these different easing styles work, there is the enum reference on the documentation, where you have all of these styles presented as they basically go. So you can see that linear is a straight line, and the rest are basically more of a curve. And I'm going to be leaving a link to the documentation in the description. But anyways, let's give it a easing style of maybe like cubic. And then the easing direction, where you have in, out, and then in and out. In means that the easing style is going to go from the front to the end. Out means it's going to be the other way around. It's going to be moving in the backwards direction. And then in and out means that when it's going to reach the midway point, it's going to play in reverse. So let's just leave it as in. So back to the twin service create. Now we need to pass in the twin information, which is going to be right here, and then a property table. And the property table is a table of all of the properties of the instance that we want to change. And we can either have it right here, or we can maybe make another local variable. And I'm going to pass this property table into the twin create. So the thing we want to change on the ball is the color. So we set the color to be color fit at new, and then we can twin it to maybe be red. And if you wanted to change multiple properties, you could just do a comma, and I'm going to just format it like this so it's more readable, and then just add another property in the table of let's say like a C frame, which would be equal to ball that C frame, and then let's say I wanted to just move this ball a little bit up. So I would add a vector fit at new on 0, 1 and 0. And right now nothing is going to happen if I do a run test, that's because we created the twin and didn't play it. And to play the twin we need to use the play method. So you just do my twin, followed by play. So right now if I do a run test, not only this ball is going to move a little bit, but it's also going to change the color. And I'm going to just move it a bit higher for showcase and give it a bit more time. So just to present it again I'm going to do another run test. And there it goes. You can see that it was going much slower and that's because I added more time. 
and that's the basics of a twin and right now let me talk about different properties and events of twins so the first thing i'm going to say is that if you want to wait for the twin to finish if you have the twin variable you can follow it by the dot notation and then search for the completed event and then you can either just connect a function that's going to happen after the twin finishes i'm just going to print out finished after it's done so after three seconds it should just print out finished right here or a different method you can use if you don't want to connect the event is the wait method and then after it finishes i'm going to print out finished again where the scope of this script is going to wait for the twin to complete so then later it can basically just continue some code here let's say that was running after and again it printed out finished and I'm just going to comment this line for now. Now if I, let's say, wanted to play this twin for 10 seconds, and then just wanted to pause it after like 3 seconds maybe. So I can do task wait 3, and then do my twin and then use the pause method. So after 3 seconds, it basically just stopped playing the twin. And now if I add the completed function again, and do a playtest, that twin is not going to complete because it's going to be basically just frozen. So this function isn't going to happen. And I'm just going to change this one to 5 seconds. And let's say I wanted to resume the twin after another 2 seconds. And I can do that by just doing twin play again. Now it's going to stop and then wait 2 seconds. And then it's going to resume and finish. And now let's say that instead of pausing the twin, I wanted to completely just stop it. And I can do that by doing twin and cancel instead of pause. So if I do a run test now, it's going to go a bit up and then it's going to cancel the twin like so. And to see at which playback state the twin is, you can use the twin playback state property. Then you have the begin, delayed, playing, pause, completed and cancelled. And there is also a delay time that you can add to a twin. So you can get this state by doing twin that playback state. And right now it's going to be basically just cancelled. Here it printed out enum playback state and cancelled. And that's because it was cancelled right here. And now let's say you wanted to play multiple twins at once. And instead of having multiple properties of one instance, you would have basically multiple instances that you want the twins to play on. And I can do that by moving this script into the server script service, let's say, and just duplicate this ball and name this one ball2. Then just do workspace that ball and workspace that ball2. And I'm going to comment all of this. And instead of having just my twin, what I can do is a twin table, which is equal to, and then just copy this twin create and put it into the table, then do a comma, and then paste it in. And except doing ball, I'm going to do ball two. And now I want to basically just loop through the twin table, And then just do twin and play like this. And if I'm going to run it right now, it's going to basically do the same twin on both of these. And here they go. And for the last thing, I basically just want to mention that it's better to play twins on the client than the server. And that is because the server has a networking limitations and the twins are going to be way smoother on the client than the server. So if I change, let's say, this script into a client run context and just put it inside of the workspace if i do a run test nothing is going to happen and that is because i don't have a client right now so i need to do a play test instead and i should also do wait for child and just in case i'm going to delay the script by five seconds so now i'm just going to be here and then you can see that the twin is happening right now and it's stuck right there because it's not being physics simulated. And that's because the server registers the ball as it was basically right there. But this was basically just to showcase you the server and client twin playing. If you want to know more about that, I have a video made on it. And I'm going to leave it in the description. It was the how you should be twinning doors video, I believe. But anyway, that is going to be everything for today. So as usual, if you found this tutorial informative, then please leave a like. You can also subscribe to the channel or become a channel member, it would really support me. But yeah, thank you guys for watching and see ya.